In this video, we're going to look at some quick worked examples of rearranging harder formulae and equations. Let's start off now with the formula z is equal to the square root of x over x plus y. And in this particular case, we want to make x the subject of the formula. So I can see that x appears in the numerator and the denominator, and this is all under the square root. The first thing I'm going to do is square both sides. So that will give me z squared is equal to x over x plus y. If I square the square root, I simply end up with the quantity that was under the root. At this stage, I'm going to multiply both sides by the denominator of the fraction. That will give me z squared multiplied by the quantity x plus y is equal to x. I'm now going to expand the bracket, so I've got z squared x plus z squared y is equal to x. At this stage, I've got two different choices. What I'm going to do is just write a little one here and do the first choice. Then I'll go ahead and do the second one shortly. What I'm going to do at this stage is subtract now z squared x from both sides. That means that all of the terms including an x will be on the right, all of the terms without an x will be on the left. So I'll have z squared y is equal to x minus z squared x. I can now factor out x, so we can say that z squared y will be x, I'll have 1 minus z squared. At this stage, I can divide through by the content of the bracket, so we have z squared y over 1 minus z squared is equal to x, and I've made x the subject of the formula. At this stage, I could have taken a different approach. What I could have done here is subtracted x from both sides and subtracted z squared y from both sides. That would give me z squared x minus x is equal to minus z squared y. At this stage, I would factor x on the left-hand side. We'd have z squared minus 1, and that would leave me minus z squared y. At this stage, I'd divide through by the content of the bracket, and I'd have minus z squared y over the quantity z squared minus 1. These two expressions for x in terms of z and y are identical. If we wanted, we could go ahead and factor out a minus 1 and write it in exactly the same way. If you wanted to test this with numeric values, you could let z be equal to 2 and y be equal to 3. So if you subbed in, we would have now z squared, which is going to be 4, multiplied by y, which is going to be 3, over 1 minus z squared. Well, z squared is going to give us 4. So that's going to be 12 over minus 3, which gives us minus 4. If we subbed it in here, we'd have now minus 4 multiplied by y, which is 3, over 4, that's z squared, minus 1. So we'd have now minus 12 over 3, which is minus 4. So we can see either way around now, they give us the same numeric value. These two things are identical. They're just written in a different way. OK, let's do another one. Uh, let's look at another formula. Let's look at a. So we've got uh, uppercase a is going to be equal to the square root of s multiplied by s minus x. And then we'll have that now over a, and that's lowercase a, x. And again, we're going to make x the subject of this formula. Squaring both sides, I've now got a squared is going to be equal to s multiplied by s minus x over now ax. I'm going to multiply both sides by the denominator of the fraction. So I have a squared ax. And then I'm going to expand the brackets to give me s squared minus sx. I'm going to collect terms including an x on the left hand side. So I've got a squared a multiplied by x plus sx is going to be equal to s squared. So everything on the left hand side has an x in, everything on the right hand doesn't. We factor out the x, that's going to leave me a squared multiplied by a plus s is equal to s squared. And then simply divide through by the content of the bracket, s squared over a squared a plus s, and that gives us now x in terms of s, uppercase and lowercase a. So we've gone ahead and made x the subject of the formula. 